Hello, dear viewers, and welcome to a new edition of the Daily Debate. Uh, the Egypt-EU Investment uh, Conference that is to be held uh, here in Cairo on the 29th and 30th of this month uh, marks uh, a new era of economic cooperation between Egypt and the European Union. The conference organized partnership between Egypt and the EU Commission is held under the auspices of His Excellency President Assisi and uh, Ursula von der Leyen the President of the European Commission. The event emerges at a time when Egypt is undergoing significant economic reforms aimed at fostering sustainability and attracting new foreign direct investments. It signifies a major step towards uh, uh, following the strategic and comprehensive partnership between Egypt and the European Union bringing together key government officials, business leaders and development partners to explore investment opportunities and showcase Egypt's economic potential. The Egypt-EU conference on the 29th and 30th of June will be our main topic for this edition of the Daily Debate. And first, we'll be watching a, a report about that uh, a conference uh, uh, which uh, reviews the infrastructure opportunities uh, in uh, Egypt. The Egypt-EU Investment Conference 2024 holds significant importance for all state institutions as it aims to showcase various investment opportunities available in the Egyptian economy. The conference also aims to attract diverse and significant European investments into Egypt, especially in priority sectors. These include sustainable infrastructure, renewable energy and electricity, food security, health and education, sustainable transportation, water networks and sanitation. Additionally, it focuses on small, medium and micro enterprises as well as environmental projects. Holding this conference in Egypt sends a message of confidence from the European Union regarding Egypt's economic achievements through the economic reform programs implemented over the past decade. This includes unprecedented infrastructure projects completed during this period. Furthermore, the conference serves as proof of the success of Egypt's recent economic reform measures, which have stabilized the Egyptian economy, particularly through the liberalization of the exchange rate and elimination of the parallel market. These reforms have reshaped the perspectives of international rating institutions on the Egyptian economy, shifting from negative outlooks to stable and even positive prospects. Within the framework of the Investment Authority, several targeted sectors are identified for cooperation with the European Union along with their sub-activities. Coordination is also underway with BCG, Boston Consulting Group, which is organizing the conference regarding mechanisms for presenting investment opportunities in those sectors. At the industrial level, cooperation will encompass three industrial areas, pharmaceuticals and active ingredients, biopharmaceuticals, medical devices, modern agriculture and modern irrigation methods, water management and food manufacturing. Right, welcome back and thank you for staying with us, uh, dear viewers. Uh, at the Egypt EU conference is our main topic uh, for tonight and uh, we are glad uh, to have with us now here in the studio uh, Mr. Raed Alem, uh, Corporate uh, Finance, Finance consultant. consultant. A very good evening to you, uh, uh, Mr. Alem, and thank you for joining us. You, you so so yeah. as you see, how, how do you see first the significance, uh, the, the timing, the importance of, of such a, a conference uh, that highlights cooperation between uh, Egypt and the uh, it's European Union? Actually, this conference is very important, but uh, I think it's, it, 
maybe it's better to just uh, maybe in another date or another time because now we are uh, in a peak of first of all of heat okay and we have some conflicts or some uh, obstacles uh, not good to uh, to share or uh, to put some emphasis on it uh, as a matter of fact i would like to uh, put some emphasis about this conference it is very important because we have a lot of opportunity here in Egypt mm. uh, to invest and we definitely we need a lot of finance and cooperation in these uh, fields. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, definitely, definitely uh, we need some technology transfer, we have uh, some know-how transfer okay, and, and ad 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 adaptation. Um, what I'm saying is that uh, our relation with the uh, European community uh, has a long time and there is many significant uh, relation and issues has been um, uh, processed many years ago. Uh, now we talk about uh, um, uh, imports and trade about 24 billion uh, euros and this is because of custom free uh, uh, agreement, agreement. Mm -hmm. and uh, actually 40% uh, of our direct investments uh, in Egypt are from the European community mm -hmm. so uh, definitely we have to work on it properly and trying as much as we can to uh, give a push to more investments right uh, Mr. Alem, Egypt and the EU have uh, mutually agreed to elevate their relationship to a level of strategic and comprehensive uh, uh, partnership. Uh, in this uh, 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 respect, how do you see this partnership uh, developing? Uh, okay. Ne strategic partnership. Strategic partner. Actually, Egypt as uh, a center of uh, Africa and uh, you can say the major uh, country in the area okay and there is a lot of um, uh, forces or you elements okay uh, to see uh, that Egypt is a potential okay as a heart of uh, Arab countries and Middle East it is the gate to and from yes uh, Africa. Ah, this is what I'm, what I'm trying to say yeah. okay uh, uh, anyone can yeah. like to do something he just start with Egypt okay uh, this is because a lot of things because of the population the level of education there is a lot of elements uh, to uh, work on uh, on this the history, the geographic location, and you name it. Yeah. Uh, you name it. Uh, two seas, uh, okay, uh, uh, can uh, Swiss Canal, uh, and so on. Right. Okay. But the problem is that the population is a good measure, and meanwhile is a little bit weak because we need, okay, more, more, okay. Uh, stress mm. in education okay mm. and uh, put some regulation for uh, small use working okay mm. the strategic planning w between Europe and uh, Egypt uh, is uh, a must but first of all and meanwhile okay the uh, European community understand very well okay that any growing market will be Egypt okay if we talk about other countries like whatever uh, uh, Saudi Arabia Kuwait whatever the population is not a good market for the product or for uh, technical support okay uh, on the other side okay uh, Europe have some recession okay and recession means that there is no growth, uh, economic growth over there. Okay, so some uh, finance will go out. Okay, for just uh, make more and more uh, profit for the European community. Hmm. Sir, uh, dear viewers, we have to go now uh, live to listen to uh, Al Asha um, uh, call. 
so the, the call for uh, prayer uh, or Adhan al Asha uh, is now live here on ITV International. Then we'll be back with Mr. Alam, continue the uh, talk about the Egypt EU partnership. Welcome back, dear viewers, to the Daily Debate uh, with uh, Mr. Raed Alem, the Corporate uh, Finance Consultant, talking about the Egypt-EU Conference and uh, uh, the Egypt-EU Comprehensive and Strategic Partnership. Now, Mr. Alem, we understand that this conference aims at attracting investments uh, to Egypt in many, many areas, including uh, energy, electricity, renewable energy, food security, health, education, transportation, water, uh, networks, uh, sanitation, and, and more, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, uh, petrochemicals, so on. Tell us about the, those opportunities and where do true big opportunities lie in our huge market. As you mentioned earlier, Egypt is a huge market. Okay. Uh, Economic-wise, okay, uh, you cannot open all the sectors, okay, you want to invest on it. Because this type of investment maybe not uh, succeeded enough, okay, or making it the proper target. We should, first of all, concentrate about three or four uh, uh, opportunities or sectors uh, to Which be, are? Which uh, definitely uh, an infrastructure, definitely uh, water plans, uh, electricity, um, technology, uh, health. Renewable energy, and health. 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 And uh, we have to make sort of uh, many feasibility studies, okay, for such opportunities. S some figures, some uh, round mm. figures, mm. okay, uh, to give some impact about this project. But uh, in my opinion, which is maybe not right, but uh, actually uh, we cannot, oh, economically, no one can uh, do everything in every sector. So, right. Uh, I prefer that we talk about the major issues and the focus. major focus and the focus, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah, and mm. concentrate on few sectors mm. with few opportunities. Okay, mm. Mm. as uh, we know, uh, there is the green uh, uh, power. Okay, uh, we about uh, solar uh, supply energy. energy. Yeah. Okay, definitely we need such technology and to build some factories or something out to, to make some uh, technology uh, transfer, know-how transfer, okay, for such, because we are a very sunny country, okay, and with the, uh, the weather changes and the environment changes, definitely we have more sun, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that we can be uh, useful or be utilized properly, okay. Uh, I think this is one of the major issues and definitely for uh, the health and the medical supplies it's very very important okay mm. because mm. of the crisis all around the world about uh, this uh, uh, medicine supplies and so on okay so this is to my concern or to my opinion this is very important uh, sectors okay and uh, how do you see the, the EU support uh, Mr. Alem for Egypt's efforts in hosting uh, refugees and, and, and both sides are committed to the protection of uh, the rights of uh, migrants and, and refugees worldwide and we have here in Egypt like I don't know over 10 million uh, actually there is uh, uh, a subsidy of around 7.4 million Million, million or billion? Billion. Billion. billion, billion, billion. Yes, sorry. Billion. Currency? Yes. Uh, Which euros? euros? Okay. Billion euros. Yes. Seven point four billion euros. Seven point four uh, billion euros uh, mm. has been granted uh, for Egypt. Mm. Five uh, of them as a loan, and two point four as uh, a grant. Uh, part of it that the immigration, okay, is a problem for Europe and definitely a problem for us, okay? A problem for Europe because there is a lot of, uh, um, of 
ships, small ships or something, trying to migrate to uh, Europe and, yeah. and enter them. illegally. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, okay. And meanwhile, we have the same problem here, but because there is a lot of people actually uh, entered illegally. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I read two days before, or something like this, that uh, Europe uh, put some um, security system or something like this, and ask Egypt to do, to do the same, okay? Uh, and this is why they put uh, five million for this, uh, this project and 2.4 for uh, private sector, and if I remember, six billion or something for private sector or something like this. I don't remember the figures actually. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is a very, very important issue, of course. Okay. And now there is uh, uh, a cooperation between Egypt and, uh, and the EU in many fields, including education, for instance. So how to enhance cooperation in the field of education and, and research uh, uh, between the, the two sides? And, and surely Egypt can can gain a lot from that. Yeah. Uh, many years ago, there is uh, some grant also for, uh, I don't remember the name, but there is a grant also for education here in Egypt, mm. uh, especially the uh, technical education. Technical education mm. Okay. Mm. I believe uh, that uh, sector of technical education mm. is very important from many signs okay first of all that we have to give some learning curve for the people that the, that the technicians are not less than anybody because not less than engineers yeah mm. okay and mm. if we saw a technician in europe or something like this this is it could be a good service that you can export technicians yeah. if you uh, laborers uh, yeah. yes mm. okay mm. Uh, so definitely we have uh, to enhance this okay to expand in many uh, governorates okay mm. Mm. but we have to put some very strict criteria okay to benefit of this grants and this mm. uh, level of uh, technical how mm. know-how mm. because uh, definitely, as many countries that have uh, increasing population, increased population, okay, there is some habits or some behaviors is not really uh, mm. promising, okay. Mm. So we have to make the learning curve, as I mentioned before, before mm. expanding the buildings itself or mm. the schools itself. Okay. Now, uh, you mentioned that you believe that uh, cooperation in the water N networks uh, is uh, is important and surely the water issue is a top uh, priority uh, for uh, uh, Egypt so uh, how do you see potentially the cooperation between Egypt and the EU uh, bilaterally regionally and internationally at all levels in the water uh, uh, domain okay uh ages or centuries or something like this we have uh, water supply Okay, in very consistent way. There is some issue about it or problem, political or problem about it, but uh, definitely there is uh, what we, we call it uh, sweetening the sweet, uh, the sea, sweetening the water of the sea. Okay, definitely desalination. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Desalination is it's another thing. Okay. It's another thing. Okay. Desalination is the treatment after uh, okay. using the water. Okay. okay. Uh, f in this field, uh, we definitely uh, need uh, to have broad mind and broad ideas about how to deal with such thing. Okay, mm. Uh, mm. we are not going to talk about some one say. Okay, why we we cannot move some ice uh, mountains from other? Mm. <laughs> mm. And it is uh, it is a matter of resources, but anyway, okay. uh, definitely the water and the electricity, the main life supplies, uh, water, electricity, medical uh, health, different ed um, education definitely needs a lot of work. Okay, Mr. Alain, dear viewers, allow us to watch another report uh, here uh, on our topic for tonight, and this uh, report will especially focus on the history of the Egypt-EU relations.
Egypt has confidently consolidated its foreign policy moves and partnerships to strengthen its relations with all countries of the world. In this context, Egyptian-European relations have notably evolved across all levels, grounded in a long history of relations, cooperation and shared interests spanning decades of strategic partnership momentum. The European Union, in particular, stands as a major supporter of Egypt regionally and internationally, viewing it as a fundamental pillar for stability in the Middle East and Africa. Thus, the relationship between the two sides holds strategic importance for both parties. Egyptian-European relations have witnessed a strong boost over the past few years, both bilaterally and multilaterally, through reciprocal visits at the presidential, prime ministerial or ministerial levels to a number of European countries, which witnessed the strengthening of multilateral cooperation and partnership mechanisms between Egypt and Europe, such as strengthening relations and trilateral cooperation with Cyprus and Greece. The brutal war in the Gaza Strip has strengthened ties between the two sides, with senior EU and European Commission officials and leaders of European countries, as Egypt is the main entry point for humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip. The President of the European Union Commission and a number of heads of state and leaders of several countries have previously praised Egypt's role in ensuring the delivery of humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip through the Rafah crossing. This comes in light of the complex relations between Egypt and Europe. The EU is Egypt's largest trade and investment partner and a key partner in the modernization process witnessed in various development sectors in Egypt. The EU ambassador to Egypt, Christian Berger, has previously emphasized that Egypt's sustainable economic development is of paramount importance to the EU. There are many frameworks of cooperation, political visions and common issues between Egypt and the EU, the most important of which are peace, security and energy security on both sides of the Mediterranean and Northern Sahara as well as issues of combating illegal immigration, crime and terrorism, and cross-border terrorism. The bilateral, political, economic and social relations between Egypt and the European Union are based on close cooperation and strategic partnership that has witnessed remarkable development over the past years, especially the framework of the Euro-Mediterranean Partnership and the integration agreement which confirms the objectives and principles of the Barcelona Declaration and moves forward towards completing the bilateral process between the Egyptian and European sides. All right, welcome back uh, dear viewers. Uh, you're still watching the daily debate uh, with Mr. Ra'id Alem, the uh, corporate finance uh, consultant and talking about the Egypt-EU uh, partnership. Now, sir, uh, how can the EU provide support uh, to uh, uh, Egypt both uh, uh, on the short-term stabilization needs and medium and long-term economic uh, uh, development? Okay. And what can Egypt give back? Uh, okay. Uh, let us uh, think about win-win uh, situation. Okay, win-win situation, it means if I have some services, okay, uh, some commodities, okay, that I can export to Europe, okay, uh, I have to uh, make uh, some strength, okay, to increase s such imports, okay. Meanwhile, uh, yes, uh, f for the sake of Egypt, we should uh, eliminate uh, the imports, okay, but uh, if the imports became on uh, supply of uh, some materials for medicines, okay, for 
uh, making medicines. Uh, some equipment, sophisticated equipment for hospitals, okay. Uh, some uh, education tools for schools, okay. Uh, then th this is needed. Yes, of mm. course, of course. Mm. Uh, uh, you cannot do economic uh, reform b b um, b without mm. making the people mm. in the right track and in the right understanding and in the right uh, level of education and the right uh, uh, commitments. There is uh, part, a very important part on our side is the learning curve and and second step is to make the transfer, okay? It is not a matter of just, okay, we have uh, some education or some loans or some grants. Or it is not the way to do things because if you don't have uh, the calibers and the, um, uh, the abilities, okay, to carry over such loans and grants, it will do nothing. Okay, so, so uh, f uh, concluding on the win-win situation, uh, how, uh, w what's the most important thing that uh, Europe can give to Egypt and vice versa? Okay, uh, to my, to, to, I believe uh, it's very important the technical know-how for many industries and many um, and managerial skills, okay, and definitely, definitely uh, some supply of uh, stability of um, the political size okay so, so, so not pushing uh, I'm not I don't understand uh, politics uh, actually but uh, the problem of uh, the Palestinian and uh, of course Egypt always has and continues to uh, uh, yeah. play the, the key role for stability in the region. This yeah. is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, it affects yeah. us also, okay, mm. because mm. Uh, we would like to keep supporting uh, the, uh, Palestine, mm. but uh, our resource is not that uh, from, enough. For, from, that stand, from that point, Egypt is not just a cornerstone of stability in the region, it's a cornerstone for stability for Europe, yes, for, for yes, Europe and yes. the world. Yeah, yeah, of mm. course, because mm. if uh, there is yeah. some action or some, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, it will affect uh, any country. Mm. This is, mm. uh, uh, yeah. it's regular because mm. they are everything is transferring. Yes, indeed. Uh, on that note, uh, dear viewers, on behalf of you, we thank very much our distinguished guests with us here in the studio. Uh, Mr. Raid Alem, uh, the corporate finance consultant. Uh, thank you very much for thank you. coming thank you. to thank us, you. sir. Okay. And thank you for watching the daily debate. Please stay with Night TV International.